The following video has been approved by the Jetty marketing team. The video has been rated Jetty. The following video may not be suitable for all viewers. G'day mate and welcome back to Dyson Sphere with me Jetty. Today we're going to be covering the Universe Matrix because this is going to be the last video in our little mini series covering all the different science packs and how to build them to ratio. Uh, every single one of these videos up until now, uh, actually including now, has been built to do 60 science per minute, i.e. one science per second. So yeah, um, we need one hell of a build. One hell of a build. Um, actually the build for this one's not too bad uh, because you have most of the prerequisites already. If we bring up the replicator and we have a look at our lovely universe matrix, you're going to see that we need a blue, a red, a ye yellow, a purple, a green uh, science cube matrix, whatever you want to call it, uh, along with one single piece of antimatter. Now, the antimatter is definitely going to be new to you. You haven't made them made antimatter probably prior to this, and you're going to need, well, one per second to continue with our current rate, or 60 per minute. Now, it does mean you're going to need all the previous science packs at the same rate. We have, or well, I've already done a video on each one of those. They will be linked down in the description below, along with, you know, other related videos that we're going to be covering as we go through this video. So we're going to need all those science packs, plus we're going to need the uh, antimatter. To get the antimatter, that's actually really, really easy. And this is going to be basically the whole production chain for this particular science pack. We're going to need uh, one miniature particle collider. It's going to be have to set to the antimatter recipe because that's the item we're trying to make. And you're going to need two critical protons. These these bright things over here. Uh, and every two seconds, you're going to take two critical protons. You're going to turn them into two antimatter and two hydrogen. The good news is um, you probably, after building green science, have a need for hydrogen. So you'll probably find a use for all that hydrogen. And the antimatter, well, two per two seconds, which is one per second. That is the exact rate you actually need. So that's the whole production chain um with that said um if you like the video hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this subscribe or something like that no there's a few more steps there's a few more steps but by all means like the video anyway i would appreciate it uh, also tell the youtube algorithm that you know maybe there are more people that need help with this exact topic uh, at the same time yeah if you're new here definitely hit that subscribe button very very much appreciate it the channel has just gone through its fourth doubling that is every year the channel doubles in size we're up to 10,000 subscribers and for that i have to thank you guys very very much it's very very appreciated so couple of things to get any matter um as said we're going to need the critical proton and we're also going to need to make the science packs themselves as we can see here the science packs take 15 seconds that is 15 seconds inside a lab to mix all together with a piece of any matter marinate out and then produce our one science per second we're looking for which means you're going to need 15 labs uh which is the hang on we'll fly up a bit higher that many um i've actually maxed out the technology tree so I can build up to 15 labs in height, hence I have built 15 labs in height. If you don't have the technology tree maxed out and you can't build that high yet, three rows of five, three rows of five is probably the easiest answer. Um, and run belts in front, belts behind, and bring out the, the universe matrix on either side. As for the critical protons themselves, well, they're going to require you to go through a couple more steps. And this is really where the challenge for the universe matrix comes from. You're going to need some ray receivers. Now, I will actually link down uh, in the description, um, and maybe even up the top right-hand corner, a video I did cover on the Dyson Swarm and the ray receivers. Because normally you, you use these for power generation. And you're going to get, like, you know, 6 megawatts worth of power. 6 megawatts worth of power um, from your Dyson Sphere, Dyson Swarm, um, whatever it happens to be. And you're good to go um it will max out after enough continuous receiving that you'll actually get about 12 and a half megawatt or 12 12 12 and a half 12 and a half megawatts of power i think it is but we want to be in photo generation mode uh photon generation mode so as you can see i'm using 6.5 megawatts if i go over to photon generation it jumps up to 32 megawatts worth of power so a lot more power consumed from your Dyson sphere and uh, as you can see I'm making 2.65 per minute as the continuous receiving goes up so the longer these guys sit in the sun the more power they can potentially pull down and also um, well in power mode yeah the more power they can pull down in photon generation mode the quicker they actually make photons which is the main goal we're looking for here now if I happen to find one can I get one? Oh, I want one right on three. No, okay, 3.08. That's the closest one we get. We can see we're using about 
38 megawatts worth of power okay 38 megawatts worth of power if we do the math really quickly it means you need 960 970 megawatts worth of power from your dyson sphere so you're gonna have to make a dyson sphere or a dyson swarm that produces about a gigawatt worth of power now i'm actually lucky uh if we go to my particular sun right here um we can see i've only put a narrow band around it um i have built a swarm i.e a, a a sphere a permanent structure rather than a swarm and as you can see i'm somewhat lucky using a uh o type an o type star it has an illumination of 2.45 it's about two and a half times as powerful as whatever you've got in your home uh your home solar system so yeah you you can imagine you're going to need a lot more a lot more sails, a lot more sphere structure, a lot more of everything to get the same sort of power generation. Um, yeah, but I'm fairly lucky at 7 gigawatts plus. So, you're also going to need a whole bunch of ray receivers. And as I said, these are covered in more depth in the videos down in the description below where I actually covered the ray receivers uh, with the Dyson Swarm. But you're going to need a whole bunch of these. I'm sort of lucky that I've just covered the North Pole. I've covered the North Pole in about... 80 of these, not 80 or 90 of these, and when you actually set these guys up, for the first time ever, you're going to actually use the outputs from these guys, so they actually have a belt that can either go in the front or the back, so they can either go in the back or out of the back or out of the front, and then what I've done is I've just got one belt feeding out down one of the uh, equatorial lines, equatorial quadrangle lines, quadrangle lines I think they're called, and uh, the rest of the time I'm just feeding around a circle out to the main line, around in a giant circle out to the main line, and just feeding these guys in onto those main lines over and over and over to make sure I have the photon generation. Now, I didn't make an exact number, because as the continuous receiving goes up, as you can see the power, or the, the power consumption is going to go up, along with the uh, critical proton generation per minute is also going to go up. So trying to get something that's going to produce exactly the amount you want for the exact amount of time you want is going to be very, very difficult. On top of that, they are going to slowly, uh, you're going up still, does that mean you, this side's going down? Maybe. Mm, nope, that's also going up. Well, there you go. Uh, it also means that slowly over time, these are going to slip out of... There we go. That one's going down. So this is going to slip out of um, out of being able to actually receive power as the sun sets over the horizon, which means different ones are going to power up and power down as your game continues. So I sort of overbuilt this, but the bottom line is you're going to need about 60 of these per minute. If I bring up my production stats and we go to one minute and we look at the favorites, uh, I'm actually producing... 180-ish, 170-ish. Um, it sort of varies up and down, as you can see from the peaks and the troughs, according to how many of them happen to be in sunlight and happen to be receiving power. On top of that, as I said, yeah, with the way the continuous receiving goes up and down and it fluctuates, it's going to move all over the place. So I'm using uh, 2.67 gigawatts worth of power to produce... 170 ish per minute um so one gigawatt worth of power is about is pretty safe i'm so i will mention um my ray receiving efficiency is awfully high at well that's counting up so that doesn't really help um it, it is awfully high because i have done a number of the researches here solar ray basically uh, basic energy dispersion uh, dissipation dissipation um that's an infant tech this one which I've done, well, that's level 7, that's level 11. I've done that research a number of times. Anyway, um, as I was saying, after we have our critical pr protons, critical, yeah, critical protons, you need to bring them down. And I've put them in a buffer, okay? And this is essentially what this uh, interstellar logistics station is doing. It's providing a buffer, okay? And the reason I've used this rather than a couple of belt, uh, a couple of boxes and a bunch of sorters is I can feed a belt in and I can feed a belt out. Oh, oh, because I already know it's going to come up in the comments. Uh, can you, because it's definitely come up in the comments, can I, do, 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 can I bring a belt into one of these? Come on, line up. Uh, that's out in. In from the rear. Haha. -ha. Somebody's going to want to ask, can you just run the belt through these machines, run all the existing protons in and back out the other side? The short answer is no. No, not at all. Um, it's unfortunate. I tried it. Didn't work. Okay. Back to our buffer box. Okay. 
I'm choosing to use an interstellar logistics station. Two reasons. One, it's a belt in and belt out, so therefore it's going to run at the maximum speed of the belt. On top of that, it's a quick and easy and convenient way for me to get rid of my hydrogen. Okay, um, as you can see, I'm pushing my hydrogen out of the particle glider onto this belt fitting into the interstellar logistics station. And then I have drones at the other end coming and picking up the hydrogen from here so it doesn't back up and getting rid of it. You could use a belt, you could use whatever you want, but the main thing I want to really outline is using one of these as a massive buffer, a massive, very, very tight buffer, because if you have these in your inventory, uh, actually, no, they're second 100. Yeah, they're second 100. So they're not too bad at stacking inside um, inside boxes, but this is more convenient. Way, way, way more convenient. Okay, uh, as I said, they're going to come out here. They're going to feed into the particle collider. It's going to split off your hydrogen, which I'm just disposing of in there and having drones come pick it up and cycle it into power or more likely into green science because our the gravity matrix was definitely hydrogen short so this is a good place to get a little bit more hydrogen to feed that one a little bit faster um, and at the same time we're bringing out the antimatter and we're shoving it straight to labs now all these labs here 15 labs high how many labs can you actually run off 15 labs high uh, the bad news is uh, Uh, if we set that to research, the bad news is, uh, can I, uh, never mind, I should do it, no, put those in there with one more, okay, so, if you've got, no, oh, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, this guy is going to run sometimes, okay? So you can see I've got three, two in the top lab, one, and then he's probably going to run out. No, he, oh, zero, one, three. It's counting up and down, okay? It's counting up and down. Now, as for research, because that's definitely going to come up again in the comment section, um, there is research speed, one, two, three. One, two, three are uh, purple, purple, and purple. And then you have research speed four. Okay, which will speed up your labs. Currently, my labs are doing 240 hashes per second. I haven't bothered getting the uh, research speed four, which is an infinite research. You can make your labs go faster and faster and faster. That is just using science in the labs. That is not actually producing science faster, but you can make the labs go, go faster and research faster. The catch is I'm only running three and a bit labs occasionally off 15 labs making universe matrix okay so it's something you have to keep in mind that you're not going to run many labs off this if you want to run significantly more labs um you're going to have to significantly bump up your science as for the science itself there is a number of infant texts so obviously as i said we have the research speed we also have the veins utilization that's one of the researches i've done quite a number of times as we can see where is we uh all consumption per minor product so my, uh, I've got plus 10 mining speed, so I'm up to 190%, uh, 190% mining speed. On top of that, for every one ore I get out of a miner, I'm only using 57% of the ore in the veins. So it does mean that I'm getting not quite double the amount out of each vein yet. So if I find a vein on a planet that has about a million, it's probably closer to 2 million. Not quite, but with a couple more levels of research, it definitely will be. And also, you might notice with me running three labs, um, it's 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 a two-hour research. Two and a, two and a half hours, depending on how many labs are running it right that second. Uh, two-hour research to get to the next level, which is 20,000 packs. Uh, one of the other researches there are is the logistics carrier engine, which will increase the speed of... Where are they? Uh, the... Uh, logistics drone flight. So at the moment, uh, the logistics strengths, drones, the little ones, are doing 34.4 meters per second. And the big ones are doing uh, between planets, okay, 2,700 meters per second. And it turns out, it's not mentioned here in the tech tree at all, 
but it also increases their warp speed. So as you can see, they're doing two, 0.23 light years per second compared to Mr. Mech, who's only doing 0.21 light years per second. So I've actually got my logistics vessels flying through space faster than I am. Uh, on top of that, you can also do the ray transmission efficiency. So again, pulling power out of your Dyson Sphere more efficiently. Um, each upgrade reduces that by 15%. It, it does have diminishing returns on it. I've researched up to, you know, 19.42%. Uh, next couple of infinite researches are the drone engines. So I have multiple drones. As you can see, they do 20 meters per second compared to my mech only moves at 16 meters per second, which is really, really handy because my drones are now faster than I am, which means they can always catch up with me. Really, really important. If I'm flying, I'm still technically faster but not by a whole lot. Uh, on top of that, you can also have extra drones. I'm up to 15, 15 drones at 20 minutes per second. I found it's just about enough that they can build faster than I can plan, which is a really, really good sign. Maybe not so much art now. The upgrade planner has been released, but I haven't had a chance to play with that. We'll find out uh, that in an upcoming video. Uh, on top of that, there is the energy circuit. So this is producing power faster from burning materials in the mech. Um, being that you're at late game, you're either throwing enough power that it's not an issue or, well, maybe you're powering up from your internal network using the um, the wireless power transceivers. Um, either way, it is an infant tech. I, I think I've done one level. Um, that was enough. And there is also the mecha core to have more maximum power inside your mecha. Um, I have 7.98 gigajoules which means that if I fly from one side of my, well, from the far reaches of my cluster back to my home planet in the middle, I use about half of my avail available energy, a little bit less. So I can probably fly from one side of my solar system, my cluster, my, my galaxy to, to the other side and probably still have some power left. On top of that, the other thing that we do use antimatter for is for creating antimatter fuel rods. Okay, so this is why having a little bit of extra critical photons will never hurt you because it means you can then make some antimatter fuel rods. And after you throw those in the mech, um, I throw in 80. And I generally don't worry about power for about 10 hours. 10 hours is sort of how long it takes for me to burn through all this warping and doing whatever the hell I want because it honestly doesn't matter. So, with all that said, that is the universe matrix, okay? As always, if you want to see more videos like this, by all means, click the like button, click the subscribe button. I'd very, very much appreciate it. If you want to see more of my Cybertron planet, because you might have noticed it is completely landfilled or I will completely foundation all over. And, it's, and at the top, we are slowly, slowly, slowly trying to make a mega base, including that's the green science build that we built on this planet as well. Um, by all means, come follow me on, over on Twitch. I do generally stream every weekend. That is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday nights at... 10 p.m. roughly Sydney time. Uh, that's Sydney Australia, in case you haven't noticed. A little bit of an Australian accent going. Uh, on top of that, um, you're always welcome to have a look at the playlist that's on your screen right about now, hopefully, and see if any of the other tips and tricks videos uh, I have done on the done previously might help you out. Um, we've covered Dyson Sphere, we've covered the Dyson Swarms, we've covered Derelium, uh, Deuterium, sorry, Deuterium. We've covered all the previous science packs. Um, we've covered lots of, lots of things throughout this series. Anyway, with all that said, as I said, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, bye.